Now I'm classing this tank as a nano tank because it holds around 150 litres or 33 US gallons, but I'd be interested to know if you think that still counts as a nano tank, so let me know in the comments. It's been up and running for a little under two months now, and I've finally got the sump set up the way I want it. So today I'll show you what filtration I'm running and what modifications I've made to the sump itself. Then I'll give you a quick update on the tank itself to show you how it's getting on in the early stages. And if you're new here and want a weekly dose of reefing goodness, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I upload. The first thing you'll notice is that I've installed a Clarity automatic filter roller. I should say quickly that I haven't been given any equipment for free in this tank, I've bought everything you'll see with my own money. This is the SK3000 and I first had to make room by removing the existing filter sock section. Now removing baffles from a sump is quite frankly a bit of a ball ache. Having the sump out of the cabinet helped, but it took a lot of patience and about two hours of slowly and repeatedly cutting away the silicon around each baffle. I chose to use a scalpel because I'm a moron and because I like to live dangerously, but please don't see this as a how-to video, pushing a razor sharp scalpel through silicon is of course very dangerous and you could very easily slip and do yourself a mischief. Once I'd removed the filter sock section, I then had to hard plumb the clarity in place. Doing so was a little bit fiddly and I needed to buy a 90 degree elbow to connect the clarity to the main drain. Getting my arms into the sump cabinet to fit all of this was a little bit awkward as well, but all in all it was pretty easy and I don't think you should be put off by the install process. I went for an auto filter roller to remove any detritus and uneaten food before it breaks down so the rest of my filtration doesn't have to do so much work. The clarity has been in place for around a month now and I reckon it's used just over a third of the roll. I feed less than a cube of frozen per day so the roll probably won't last quite so long when I ramp up feeding over the next few months. My initial impressions of the clarity are very positive and I don't really have much bad to say about it, but I'll reserve judgement until I've had it a bit longer and I'll do a full review video another time. Aside from the Clarity, my other primary filtration is going to be my algae refugium. I've bought two Tunzi 8831 refugium lights, which should be enough given this is only a 150 litre tank, but they're only 9 watts each, so I'll probably add one or two more later. I use the same refugium lights in my main tank, and I think they're great. They're submersible, so they don't get in the way above the sump, which is really important in a small space like this, and a real bonus. Now, because I'm running a refugium, I've had to create blackout panels to stop light spilling elsewhere in the sump. This was a 5mm thick A3 sheet of acrylic that I got from eBay for a few quid. You can cut it to shape fairly easily, and I find 5mm is thick enough to block out pretty much all of the light, whereas the 2mm thick sheet I first tried let some light through. For now, I've just blocked off the freshwater reservoir for my auto top off, but I could probably do with blocking off the front of the clarity to stop it clogging with algae over time, but that is very much a job for future Alex to worry about. Because most water box sumps aren't set up for a refugium, I've also had to add in a weir comb to catch any escaping strands of Kato. This is a D&D &D weir comb that I've cut to fit the baffle just before the return pump section in the sump. It's doing the job so far, but it's still early days, so I'll see how I get on over time. You'll also notice I have a few bits of live rock in the sump. I've done that partly to provide a place for microfauna and filter feeders to grow, but mainly because I couldn't fit it all in my display tank, and I wanted to squeeze as much live rock in as possible, given I won't be running a skimmer on this tank. I've supplemented the live rock by adding a bag of Ciparax filter media, which will provide more surface area for bacteria to colonise. But that is the end of my filtration, so really all I have is an automatic filter roller, a Kato bed and about 10 kilos of live rock. I don't plan on keeping more than 5 fish at the absolute most in this tank, so that should be plenty of filtration for now, although I'll almost certainly have to run a phosphate remover like Roafoss at some point down the line and I'll start adding activated carbon soon to give me nice clear water. The last thing to show you in my sump is the light I've installed so I can see what I'm doing. It's a Philips Hue strip which to be honest is probably overkill, you can get much cheaper strip lights that do a perfectly decent job, but the Philips strips are really nice and bright and I have them connected to a motion sensor which means they come on automatically when I open the door and stay on until I've finished doing what I'm doing and for that reason alone I think they're worth the extra expense. The tank itself is doing fine so far, there's no sign yet of the ugly stage after two months and I haven't had any diatom blooms or any significant algae outbreaks. 
I do have a few tufts of ulva algae, but I've bought the world's smallest one spot fox face to take care of that, and he's already made a bit of a tentative start. I also have a Scopas tang in here temporarily, although he's likely to outgrow the tank pretty quickly, so he may not be in here much more than 6 months at the absolute most, whereas I'm hoping the fox face will last a good year or so. Finally, I have three Springer's damsels. By reputation, these guys are the most peaceful of the damsel family, so they should play nice. They also have a reputation for eating pests like flatworms, which is important to me given this is ultimately a tank I'll be using to grow out my coral frags. And speaking of corals, I've put a few well settled frags from my main tank in to see how they get on. The zoas have been in for a couple of weeks and are doing great, but I've only just put the Montiporas in. Now it might be too early for them, and ideally I wouldn't add SPS corals for at least a couple more months, but they can always go back in my main tank if I run into problems. Along with the usual cleanup crew of 5 or 10 red leg hermits and about 10 or 15 trochus snails, I've also added a few quirky inverts. There's the obligatory cleaner shrimp, without which no marine tank would be complete, and a pair of sexy shrimp to do some funky dancing. Both of these guys are out and about most of the time strutting their stuff. But my pom pom crab is much more secretive, and I've only seen him a handful of times since I added him. And the same can be said of the three bumblebee shrimp I bought, one of whom just happened to come out and say hello when I had my camera on me. I got them because they're cool, not for eating Asterina starfish. As I understand it, they only eat the tube feet of starfish, which supposedly Asterinas don't have. But if they happen to expand their palate, I won't be complaining. My pair of porcelain crabs though choose to hide in plain sight and usually hang upside down somewhere, filtering out food particles from the water column. I plan on adding a couple of rock flower anemones or a mini maxi anemone to make some of these guys more comfortable, as they should set up camp in anything anemone like. But to be fair, they're all doing really well so far and don't appear to be too bothered. Now I'm able to keep all of these cool inverts because, unlike in my main tank, I don't have any real predators like large wrasses and hawkfish. Although they may have to watch out for my cat, who has apparently developed a taste for salt water. So now you're up to date with the Waterbox Frag 55.2 after two months. I'll do a rundown of the light and flow I'm using another time, but if you've got any questions in the meantime, leave them down below. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for next week. And until then, happy reefing.